the agenda for today very quickly. So we're just going to start off with some roundtable introductions um, and then a quick introduction to Accenture. We will then each go on to talk about our careers in technology and how to, we got to where we are today. And then we will have a Q&A and an over to you session where we will give the floor to you. You can ask any questions um, and see if you can align with any of our career aspirations. And then we will have a key takeaways session. Okay, to start, does everyone want to tell us their favourite subject and their favourite lockdown activity? So I'll tell you my, my favourite subject in school is definitely French, I love learning languages, and my favourite lockdown activity is trying new recipes to cook, because I'm so sad that I can't go to my favourite restaurants at the moment, so I've been trying to recreate them at home. Um, and it's been going okay so far. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to see if I can see the chat box. So I'm not sure if you can see this one, but um, someone has said that their um, favourite subject at school is science and their favourite lockdown activity is cooking and baking. Ooh, lovely. Oh, yoga. Oh, I've been doing a bit of yoga as well. Um, trying to, trying not to break my back doing yoga. <laughs> um, we have science, baking desserts, favourite lockdown activity, reading, watching Netflix. Yeah, definitely Netflix. Gone through quite a few series so far. Um, so it's subjects history, going for walks. I wish I lived in a nicer area where I could go for nice walks. So I just walk around my house a lot. But <laughs> it's not very nice, especially with the rain today. Quite a few science and computer science. Oh, it's lovely. Any more answers? Okay, let's go on to the next section. As Zazi said, we are one of the world's leading consulting and technology companies. We work for a huge variety of clients. So these are some of the examples of the clients that we work with. So Heathrow, Vodafone, Shell, Google, H&M and Lloyds. I'm going to go through a quick project example that we did with Heathrow Airport a few years ago. So the challenge was, as Heathrow is one of the largest airports in the world, they have the most international passengers passing through every year. They needed to help with the increasing number of passengers and Accenture was chosen to help with the long queues, overcrowding, etc. So the solution is that Accenture helped to introduce automated e-passport gates. So you might have seen this if you've traveled for the last few years through Heathrow. So there are gates that are available to anyone who's over the age of 18 and who lives within the EU. And how it works is you put your photo page with a passport face down onto the scanner, and then it uses facial recognition as well as um, electronic, electronic security checks to see that it's an authentic passport and that the face obviously matches the one on the photo. The process of um, automating this has led to shorter waiting times, happier customers as well, there's shorter queues, and people are just generally more happy that they're able to get through borders and customs in a much more quicker, efficient way. So as said before, these are a few of our example clients. We work with over 4,000 clients around the world in 40 different industries in over 100, 120 different countries. And we um, have a lot of big clients that we work with. Over three quarters of our clients are in the global Fortune 500. And we have just over half a million employees in Accenture at the moment. So you heard um, a few of our client examples. So um, for example, Heathrow Airport would fall into the aerospace industry. So I have a question for you guys now. So what other industries do you think Accenture work with? You might have heard some at the beginning that Zazie mentioned. So if you want to put your answer in the chat box. So 
So I'm going to read out some of the answers. So we have clothes, retail, banking, media companies that people have there. I'm going to wait a little bit longer to see if there's any more answers. Energy. Automotive industry, retail industry. Yeah, so those are really good answers. So a lot of that's all correct. So these are the main industries that we work with at the moment. So we have health, energy, life sciences, retail, automotive, public service, banking, and communications and media. And you can find yourself working in many of these different industries depending on what project you are put onto. So roles within Accenture. So um, we have a, such a wide range of roles within Accenture, not so much the stereotypical technology roles that you think. What kind of roles do you think we have here at Accenture? If you want to put your answer in the chat. I didn't even know about many of these roles before I joined the company. So it's been a real eye opener for me as well. So we have accounting, HR, website coders, legal, sales roles, someone said programming, marketing, um, finance, someone's put data systems, yeah, so these are the roles that you would typically see in a lot of graduate schemes, um, and a lot of like typical stereotypical technology roles, so su uh, things such as artificial intelligence, data science, application development, engineering, and cyber securities. But actually at Accenture, we have a wide range of roles available, some that you might not even think fall into the technology category, but they do. So things such as social media and PR, sales, I think that was mentioned in the chat, research, um, advertising, creative roles. So all of these roles are available when you join as a graduate, depending on your current skill sets, depending on what you're um, passionate about and depending on what you really want to get into. We offer a lot of training as well. So if you, there is something that you want to upskill in, it is quite easy to do that as well and move fluidly between roles. We're going to go on to talk about our careers in technology now. So I'm, I'll start off. So as you all know, my name is Serena Simpson. So I did my A-levels in mathematics, IT, sociology, and French. Um, I found that I really enjoyed math in A-level. So I decided to do a degree that combined both IT and maths. So I did a BSc on degree in computer science with mathematics at Queen Mary. I did a few internships whilst I was at university. So I did an internship at IPG Media Brands as a paid social analyst. And what that is, is you have clients that would pay you to create um, advertising content to be posted on social media sites such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I found that I really enjoyed that. So I also had a role as a junior social media coordinator at a startup company. So that was a very similar role, but I was also a customer service representative for the company, also reaching out to influencers and bloggers within the same sector, trying to really get our, the brand out there. I also was a supervisor at Holland and Barrett. That was a weekend job during university. So I did that for four years. And I found that that really helped me to build my team working skills, my customer service skills, and I reused those skills a lot in the current role that I have now. So I graduated in 2018 and I joined Accenture in April 2019. So um, that was really exciting because we got to have two weeks training in India. So I started with around 20 other graduates. So we all flew out there. We were all staying in the same hotel. We had two weeks of training. So it was really nice to really bond with the group. And as we're all in the same position, it was a very, very, very nice experience. 
Um, and then um, I started my first project in July 2019 with a telecommunications client working on an AI prediction tool. So that was really interesting. I got to use a lot of new technology that I hadn't previously encountered. I got to use a lot of the skills that I had picked up at university as well. My current project is a test analyst with an aerospace client. So what that is, is a tester basically is trying to break the software to find faults in the software. So you have to be very attentive and uh, trying out all the processes within the software to see everything is working as it should. And if it doesn't, then that goes back to the development team for them to fix any errors in the code or anything like that. I really want to move into uh, data science or business intelligence within my next role. So I'm currently doing a lot of training within that and I've been networking with a lot of people within Accenture so that when I do roll off this project, it should be much easier for me to get into the role that I desire. My hobbies, so I love traveling and I'm so sad that I'm not gonna be able to travel this summer, but uh, hopefully next year. I love learning languages. I lived in Morocco when I was younger for a year and I went to a French speaking school. So I had to learn how to speak French very quickly because all my lessons were in French. Um, and I'm also currently learning Vietnamese because my mother is Vietnamese. It would be lovely to be able to respond to her in Vietnamese rather than in English when she talks to me. Um, I'm also a big foodie, so I also really miss going out to restaurants at the moment and trying new places to eat, um, but I'm really going to be happy when that goes back to normal. <laughs> so I'll hand it over to you guys now. So what are your career aspirations? What do you want to study in university or if you want to go on to in another way like an apprenticeship? I'll just wait for people. You can type your answer in the group chat. So we have someone saying they would like to study medicine in university. Someone else was wants to study international relations in university. We have someone who said they are doing a specialized chef scholarship in college. So would like to be a chef or events caterer. I think that's pretty cool. And then we have um, someone saying they want to be a forensic scientist and study biology, chemistry and psychology. That's great. So we're going to move on. I'm going to move on to um, Armina now, who's an apprentice at Accenture, and I'll let her share her career story. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm Emena. I'm actually a degree apprentice. So what that means is um, I joined after I finished my A-levels in September, so September 2019. And I'm basically following the degree apprenticeship route. So that means once a week I go to university and then the rest of the week I work just like Zarina at Accenture. So um, I'm just gonna go back into like my education. So I've done maths, chemistry, biology, and French at A-level um, and AS physics, but I dropped that in AS. Uh, and so university, I'm at UEL, so University of East London, and that's part of the degree apprenticeship program at Accenture. So essentially, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I kind of wanted to go into science, but I wasn't really sure into what, and I kind of was a bit sick of my biology and chemistry. As much as I liked it, I was a bit like, I want to do something else. So I was like, maybe I should try out um, technology and I didn't really know anything about technology. So I looked into apprenticeship programs um, and there's loads of technology apprenticeship programs, which is why I kind of got interested into Accenture and then applied through there. So, um, so pre-Accenture experience that did help me to get into my role um, was an internship at Air Products. So that's like a chemical engineering company. If you don't really know about it, they're like a USA company. And um, over there, so I learned a lot about, about the chemistry like world and how technology could be used into the like chemical engineering field. Um, I was also a maths mentor at school. And I've, 
I was involved in a lot, a lot of charity events. So all these like little events or like vol volunteering opportunities that you think aren't really useful, they're really useful in your day-to-day -day work because they build like your team working skills, your leadership and communication skills, which helps a lot um, when you get into like a project and you need to obviously work within a team. So my Accenture experience, um, I was a WordPress developer with the DevOps team. The DevOps team is like part of the um, computer software like field. Basically, it's like developers and the operation teams working together. And I made a website for them on WordPress. Um, I'm currently in a project with NHS and I've so I'm between two roles. I'm testing their website and I'm also um, involved in like the communication side of um, their portal. And as for my hobbies, um, I really like reading. I am really, so I've got pen pals over like the world. And I like sending letters to them and like exchanging gifts. It's pretty fun. Met them on Instagram, so it's really nice. And well, at the moment I can't really go outside. So what I do is like, take pictures of the sky and I really wanted to add that I really love taking pictures of the moon. <laughs> so that's it for me. Thank you, Amina. No worries. We'll go over to Mahnoor now, who's a graduate at Accenture. She'll tell us about her career story. Hi everyone, thanks Serena. Uh, my name is Mahnoor Raja and I just joined Accenture recently in March. So I've joined in the middle of the pandemic, um, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so I studied biology, chemistry, maths and economics for my A-levels. So initially when I was some of your guys' age, I thought I might want to go down the medical route or I might want to um, become a researcher in a lab. So I went very much down the scientific path, but I very quickly realized that maybe it wasn't the right career for me. So I ended up studying biology at Queen Mary University of London, like Serena. Um, and I really, really enjoyed studying biology, which is why I chose it. And I knew that it was an option that would keep my career path open. So whenever I tell people that I studied biology by working tech, a lot of people are like, how? How did you do that? And the one thing I would say is that my degree really allowed me to keep my options open. So we had to do coding throughout my university degree. So in my second year, I took two coding modules um, and I learned a programming language called R, which is very similar to Python, if some of you have heard of Python before. And um, R really, really helped me in terms of looking at large data sets, which is very useful in biology and it's what we use quite a lot. And I also went on to do that in my third year. So I really had that programming and coding experience, which I think really helped me joining Accenture. Before joining Accenture, I interned at a FinTech company um, over the summer. Um, you might not have heard of it, it's a very small company, but it really, really gave me some of the skills that I use now in my day-to-day -day job, such as networking um, and being able to interact with different people and clients across Accenture. And a really, really interesting insight program that I took at Accenture before joining is called the Accenture Tech Visionaries Program. And this was where I had a five day insight week into Accenture working on a project with Accenture employees. Um, it was hosted all by Accenture and we had to work on a group project developing a blockchain solution um, to tackle a supply chain problem. It was a really, really fun challenge. I worked in a team of nine other girls with me. Um, the program was aimed at females and getting females into technology and introducing them to Accenture. So it was really, really fun to learn about Accenture as a company and also to work on an exciting challenge. So as a result of taking part in the Tech Visionaries, it helped me to secure a role at Accenture which I was really, really fortunate of because studying biology, I knew I didn't want to go down the science route anymore. Um, and I really enjoyed the coding aspect of my degree. So I was really, really lucky to have had that experience and it really opened my doors and um, all the opportunities for me at Accenture. So having joined in March, it's been a virtual start for me. 
So I haven't yet been to the office. Everything has been done over Zoom or Teams. And honestly, it's been a really, really good experience. It hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be. Um, everyone is really, really supportive. My whole start group is all in the same boat as me. So we're always pinging each other on Teams, keeping up with what's going on. Um, and the company as a whole has been really, really supportive. They've offered lots of training. I didn't get to go to India like Serena, but um, everything has been done online and they've been really, really supportive in helping us um, ensure that we're all fine and working from home. So um, at the moment in my current role, I've just joined as a um, learning and development lead in my subcommittee, which is a group of my star group and a previous star group together. So I manage um, the learning and development activities that we're running. I've also been working with senior leadership to organize virtual networking events um, for analysts across technology. So that's really, really been fun. And some of my hobbies, I enjoy cooking. So I started cooking from the age of about 11. So I really enjoy making South Asian dishes. Um, love traveling as well. I'm really, really sad I can't go anywhere. Um, and also gardening as well, which I've recently taken up in lockdown, which has been fun. That's me. Thank you, Manuel. We're going to go on to our final point here. So, Maria. Hello. So, this is very different for me because I've never done a virtual. I, I don't know. I've done Teams meetings with our internal teams, but to give a whole new event outside, uh, like not being present, I can't gauge the energy. I don't know what you guys are doing. So, it's quite different for me. Uh, but I hope you like it. So in terms of my education, obviously I come from India. So mine is going to be A-levels equivalent. So I did physics, chemistry, math and computer science, but uh, it probably doesn't fit the same pattern that you guys are used to. I also come from a background of academics. My parents are all academic, uh, strong academics. So um, I wasn't necessarily given the choice to choose what we where we had to go we were like said okay this is this is probably what i grew up with but what it what science did for me is actually set a discipline i found i find that it's more somebody like me who's quite uh, at least the way i talk or the way i uh, move along with people i needed a lot of uh, like set patterns to follow and i thought science gave me a good um, good start off with that. Uh, in terms of my university, I did engineering or the equivalent of it in India is called Tech Bachelor of Technology. So in information technology. So it was uh, not, it was more focused on data science side of things rather than the computer science field, which involved hardware stuff as well. Uh, my pre-accenture in uh, experience is quite funny. I worked for a startup called ESA because I swore off corporates. I said I would never work for a corporate and um, what happened was Accenture absorbed the co uh, this minor startup that I was uh, working for and uh, truly it was an eye-opening experience because I had, um, I never expected the variety of people I would meet in Accenture. One day you could be working with a PhD person, like a doctorate in some really, who has deep industry skills, be it health sector or maybe in, um, uh, I don't know, it, it, in any field. And the next day you could be working with somebody from arts to design a user interface. How do you make it more people friendly? How do you make it innovative? intuitive and those kind of people I would have never got as an ex as a person working for a small startup. So I did find it a little difficult the way to step into um, Accenture corporates because there are there is now hierarchy which I was not really used to. Uh, in startups everybody is around you, you can talk to people whenever you want. Uh, but it was great, uh, it was a, a good learning experience etc. Uh, and then my Accenture experience itself, I started off as a business analyst in the freight and logistics side of things. I then moved to UK five years ago 
um, I'm quite old in comparison to all of you. You guys are relatively babies uh, with just one year experience. Or oh, <laughs> somebody just joined Accenture. I really hope it's a good ride for you. But uh, I've been with Accenture for eight years now. So three years in India, I moved to UK. This is my fifth year. And uh, I've done several roles. I started off as a business analyst, uh, but my core skill right now is delivering. So 12 hours a day, it's about talking to different people. There's your team in India, and then there's a team, there's somebody calling me right now. <laughs> yeah, so there's a team in, your, in India, there's your MDs working here, and how you bring them all together. And when you deliver a release into a space, which is used by millions of people across UK, the satisfaction you get is quite interesting. And um, I think we'll touch upon your experience or what you can get out of Accenture later on. Uh, but here my hobbies, I'm going to do post-COVID and pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, it used to be all about gym. There was a lot of sports and then there was travel. Uh, obviously, I go to meet my parents. We try to do one holiday every year. So this used to be travel. Post-COVID, I'm just making TikTok videos. If you haven't made TikTok videos yet, I don't know what you're doing in COVID times. <laughs> I have not TikTok videos. <laughs> you haven't. You should totally give it a try. I think that's the best time pass I've had and the most action I've, I mean, active um, uh, activity I've done. It, some of them, the gym ones, are quite difficult. If you guys haven't tried it, I would recommend you go and try it. <laughs> Definitely. That's me. Thank you. We're going to hand it over back to you guys now. If anyone hasn't put it in before in the chat, what are your career aspirations after you've heard our career stories? Is there anything you want to share? So someone said they're not too sure yet, either university or apprenticeship. They haven't decided what they want to do. That's good. You can try Accenture maybe. Yeah, we offer both. <laughs> yeah. Someone said they're not sure, but they definitely want to study computer science at university. Yeah, good route to go down for sure, I would say. Someone has said they want to go into education, but to help out children who struggle within the systems. That's really, really interesting. I admire that. It's really nice. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have different paths that you can get into Accenture through. So I'm going to hand it over to these guys to talk to me a little bit about the three different paths. So we'll start with apprenticeships. Um, okay, so as I said earlier, apprenticeships is like 20% um, of like studying and the other 80% goes into um, working part time at the company you're in. So Accenture actually offers the degree apprenticeship program where once a week, so every Mondays we go to University of East London and we're taking part into the digital and technology solutions um, university degree which is to be honest the same as the computer science degree only it's like kind of compressed into one day and they make sure that all our lessons are spread out into the monday so that we're able to finish the whole content um, i'm not sure about next year the modules will probably be different but for now we're like in the same um lecture halls as all the other computer science like full-time degree students and we're basically doing the same thing as them um, so you don't need any like specific qualifications as the powerpoint says you only need so i think you need so you do need level three qualifications but it could be anything could be english it doesn't have to be technical at all um, i know a lot of people in our intake who like chose um, English, psychology, sociology at A level and they're still here and they, they're like super happy of being here and 
just basically learning on the go and also uni helps a lot with the learning because we learn like from the basics so you don't need to know anything beforehand to actually understand which is really good um we used to have like a level three program um but now it's not so you actually do have to pass your a levels or like any level three qualification equivalent so like BTEX or anything and get those ATU cast points to get into the apprenticeship um, so it's a two to four year dependent on the scheme so the scheme in Warwick I think is like four years but the one in London which you probably be in I think is three years so I'm in my first year now and I'll be finishing in 2022 um, so yeah, it's three years, once a week, every Monday, and then um, you've got summer holidays like every other students um, to like make sure that we know the content properly. They make, so every first, so we've got like block modules. We call that block module because for two weeks we go to university every single day in a row like normal students. And we learn like one whole module in two weeks. Um, so it's like a hardcore module, but we're getting to like finish it in two weeks which is like really good um and because Accenture is like a consulting firm we kind of work with a lot of different clients so you kind of could get like any role depending on what you want and what the company is offering like as roles but to be honest there is a lot of roles and it's depending on you to like kind of um direct your own career in a way so if for example I'm more into like technical roles I'd rather like go into technical roles but if you're more like accounting wise you could go into like finance financial roles like um, business analysts I think or like yeah any fin financial stuff there's there's a lot of business analyst roles out there as well and project management roles so yeah, you don't need any technical experience for the apprenticeship program. Um, they really just want your passion and they want you to show your interest in technology and in um, the company, obviously. And if you can show that you're interested and that you're really interested in technology and that you really want to, you're motivated enough to um, basically stay in the company for three years and do your apprenticeship then they'll de definitely um, take you on whether or not you've got technical experience or not. It's more about like the skills you've, you have and that you can show. So yeah, that's it for now. Excellent internships. Cool. So if you're in your penultimate year of university, then this is like a 10 to 12 week course uh, and we'll show you what, you what we do at Accenture how we do it and how you could be a part of it all. It's like getting a real taster of our life at Accenture. So as a graduate, there'll be so many new things that you can learn and absorb. And you can also get into a permanent role once that's complete. So the journey actually begins sometime around June. I'm not sure in COVID times how that's happening, but it begins in June. There's a week long induction. It'll give you a solid grounding. So when you land or when you're deployed onto a project, if you want to use those terms, uh, you know what you have to do. You know the people, you know how to get along. And once that's complete, it, uh, it, once you land, you start knowing what you get assigned like a body. So this buddy is like a mentor or a supporter who can teach you what uh, what you need to do basically and uh, you can do and it could be any role you could do research you could be writing re reports you could be analyzing data uh, and all this while trying to do something called side of desk work that's something very interesting at Accenture this is where the girls were just talking about the other uh, the, the people who have just joined Accenture, uh, organizing social networking events and getting to do made uh, like um, you will be talking to leadership much more than I will be talking to leadership because I'm more ground level and I have to be in the know of how things to be moving. But you guys get a real benefit of talking to our senior leadership, supporting them with your work and all of this while learning more skills of how to do things that or learning the Accenture way of life. 
So for this role, you just have to be a great, uh, you have to just have general organizational skills. And like uh, it was previously said for apprentice, apprenticeship, you also need a real passion for IT. Uh, and if you want to know uh, how technology makes difference to business, this is why you have to be. That's it. Thank you. Moving on to graduate scheme now, which is how me and Manor joined. Yeah, so um, the graduate scheme starts once you finish your degree at university um, and there are two main areas within Accenture in which your graduate scheme will fall. So we've got technology and we've got consulting and within both of these areas they then get broken down into further subdivisions. So within consulting you can join a grad scheme on consulting, strategy and analytics and within technology you can join innovation and technology engineering or technology delivery and these get broken down further so in my star group we had the choice of software engineering which is a specific graduate scheme that I'm on and we've got um, business and technology integration which is more of the BA type role business if that's what you're interested in joining um, and I'd say that there's a lot of flexibility within these graduate scheme roles here at Accenture. That is one of the advantages of working here is that you really do get the choice. Say, for example, you join on the um, more technology engineering, heavy coding side, and you may think it's not for you or you're not enjoying it as much. You can try a role in the more business and integration and more client specific side if you feel that that may be more suited to your needs. So I'd say that there's definitely a lot of flexibility um, in graduate roles here at Accenture. In terms of requirements, it's just the bachelor's degree that you would achieve at the end of your university. So for example, I studied biology. There's no specific kind of subjects as far as I'm aware, but it may differ depending on the scheme. And in terms of the role that you take, it really does depend on the project that you join. So since I joined in March, I'm not yet on a project. So I am still out there um, applying for projects, but just doing my side of desk work, um, which I mentioned earlier. And yeah, there's huge flexibility across the graduate schemes here at Accenture. So you really, really do get to um, experiment and see what you enjoy and what you like, and then take that further and develop your interest. Thank you, Noor. So having seen all the different routes you can take into Accenture and the various roles we have here, um, what do you guys think are the key takeaways from this session? I want to put your answer into the chat box. I hope you've learned something new today. <laughs> So someone has said that there are lots of different roles in technology and you don't need a specific A-level or qualification. So as you can see from our various career stories, um, we've all done very different degrees, but we've all ended up on, in the technology sector. Um, someone said not needing a specific subject to join and the many ways to do it, yeah. And someone has said, I learned that there is more than just IT and scientists, sciences that can help towards getting a job around technology. I mean, I have a colleague who did a degree in media um, and art, and she's now in the technology sector as well. So it really, you can really study any subjects that you're passionate in at university and still end up in a technology role. And someone has said that technology is used in many different fields that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Yeah, so every, every sector that you have will have some aspect of technology in it for sure. And someone has said there are lots of different routes into the sector, which was surprising. Yeah, it's, there are lots of different ways to get into Accenture from the apprenticeships to going in through an internship, to going in as an experienced hire or a graduate scheme as well. Yeah, so we're going to go on to a Q&A section. So you can ask us any questions you have anything you want clarifying that you saw in the presentation as well? I'll read out the questions in the chat and then anyone is free to answer them if you want it. 
So someone has asked, what's the most fun about your job and what is the most challenging? Does anyone want to answer that question? <laughs> I'll take that. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, the fun thing, like I said, is meeting new people. You work, you always uh, meet somebody new every day. And the challenging thing is trying to, I feel, um, when you land in a corporate, there are certain boundaries that you have to work in. Now, once again, that's a good thing uh, because it helps you then frame your expertise in a niche, niche area. But sometimes you might feel that your enthusiasm and your, and your um, need to spread your wings is quite curbed. But as you grow up in levels, you feel that there is a time that when you have to uh, get down and get your hands dirty and do things differently. Um, what I found that challenging when I specifically moved, at least from my previous work culture into a corporate, but definitely the positive of meeting wonderful people in Accenture has always been my highlight. I would say definitely the same. Like I love meeting new people, even just being in the London office on a Friday, you just like meet so many new people of varying levels. You could be sitting next to a managing director and just having a chat with them. You wouldn't even know, like there's no segregation between the different levels. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I really like. And um, someone has asked, are there roles in which I can travel a lot? So I, traveled for my <laughs> current project before lockdown so I used to go to a town called Preston every week on a Monday to Thursday come back on a Friday that's quite fun because um, essential would cover all your costs so your traveling costs and you stay in hotels breakfast lunch and dinner is covered as well um, so that's quite fun going back and forth every week it does get a bit lonely sometimes but um, as long as you get on well with your team you go out for team dinners often there are some people that have that get to travel abroad as well. I know a colleague that travelled to South Africa for his project, so he was there until we got forced to come back here for, for the lockdown. <laughs> um, so it really does depend. But yeah, because we are a world worldwide company and we have so many connections all over the world, there are projects that you can take abroad and in different cities as well. I don't know if any of you guys have, have had any projects abroad or in different towns. Yeah, to echo Zarina, Accenture has a large global footprint. So we have, we are, uh, I don't remember the number of locations, but we are there in every continent and in several locations in every continent. So uh, yes, we travel a lot. And this, I, I've been in the UK for five years now, but I traveled for four, four years. So it's not that uh, I can't do international travel because of my visa restrictions but within UK I have traveled so much and you collect so much hotel points so your holidays are sometimes completely taken care of uh, and plus the perks of having your breakfast lunch and dinner all paid off you get to meet with your team every week uh, every evening you have gym membership that you don't have to pay because your hotels usually have gym and all of that's covered so if traveling is your thing, you can always, always go. I think Accenture, you'd love Accenture. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone has asked, do you need to be confident to start a role in Accenture? I would say I was definitely not confident when I started. I'm like a very introvert person, but there are lots of opportunities um, and training that helps you to become more confident in yourself. Um, does anyone else want to add anything? Um, yeah, actually, I just wanted to echo that. Um, there's a lot of support when you join Accenture. So one thing I forgot to mention is that you get a tag buddy who's an analyst that um, has already been at the firm for some time. So you can always speak to them like one to one about any queries or concerns you may have. Um, you also sit within your subcommittee. Um, which I mentioned before is just a group of your start group and maybe another start group and you have subcommittee leads that you can talk to so they're kind of if you think about your uh, pastoral care at school for example they form that role 
Um, and you also have your career counsellor, which is like a one-to-one -one mentor that you can also touch back and ask any questions. Um, so there's definitely a lot of people there to support you every step of the way. It's not just, oh, you join Accenture and you're left to it. So um, yeah, there's definitely a huge support network. Yeah, it's going back to the point that there's always a buddy on your program when you join new, not at a more senior level, but when you guys are joining new, there's always a buddy assigned, even at a senior level, sometimes they do that. So there's no, um, there's no feeling of being left alone. And there's always somebody like Accenture has half a million people. There's always somebody you can talk to. Thank you guys. Um, we have another question. Um, what can I do now to work towards a career in technology and they're in year 10 at the moment? So I think starting GCSE. Um, I think just you can do a lot of, there's a lot of online training that is free. So and there's a lot of um, technical um, news pages as well that you can read, um, just reading and knowing like what's current in the technology industry as well. Um, maybe picking IT as a GCSE, just to see, get the gist of it and see if you like it. I don't know if you would have studied it in previous school years as well. Uh, we have something, uh, a question that is aimed towards the guys who did sciences. So if you could, would you go back and have a different job other than technology, such as medicine, as most of you have chosen sciences at A-levels? Um, I can take that. I think definitely now that when I look back at it, I was very naive um, in what I wanted to do for my career options. So I thought that um, medicine was the one for me. But after speaking to a lot of medics and doctors, um, I realised practically it wasn't. Um, and I'm really, really glad that I found an alternative, which I enjoy, um, aside from doing what I originally thought I wanted to do. And I think that's maybe a common theme that a lot of you guys might experience. It's okay to decide you might want to do something and change your mind later. There's nothing stopping you from maybe choosing science A-levels because you enjoy studying the subject um, and then taking that on further for your degree if you enjoy it and then switching and changing later on which is what I did so there's nothing to stop you it's all about just doing what you enjoy and what you like studying as well I think um, and keeping your options open is something that I would definitely um, advise. Thank you. Um, another question what's the most valuable thing your role has taught you? I think it's patience. <laughs> no, I believe it's um, understanding and uh, knowing that everybody is different and learning to work with all of them. So um, the mindset is when you join technology that everybody knows what to do and we're all going in one di direction, but that's not usually the case. And that's what I think the diversity in Accenture helps us as well. Because if we were all like the same, come from the same mold, we wouldn't probably be excellent because we think the same way, we're doing the same things. But when somebody is trying to do something different, I think that's the birth of innovation. Uh, and at that time, uh, patience is not it's not very easy because you think we're working towards one goal. So if everybody performs the same way, it's like going in the same direction uh, and you don't want to deal with the disruption, but that's where I feel uh, we learn more, we do things better, we think, do things differently. And it's also something that the clients like to see uh, as Accenture, we deliver high performance, right? It's not the usual third party vendor who comes in and delivers up and go out we are different we try to do things differently and uh, that's quite appreciated as well and to work like that we need a little bit of understanding with our colleagues yeah. thank you um, I think we have one more question if you could go back in time to when you were at school and give yourself one piece of advice what would it be um sorry can you hear me Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, 
I think I'd tell myself not to stress out too much. I know A-levels and GCSEs were really stressful. Um, and I was like myself, I was really, really stressed out because it was like revising every day, past papers every day. And it was like really getting, like my mental health was really getting like really bad. Um, and I think just like take it easy. Don't take it too easy, obviously. Make sure that you've got your, you know what you're going to do. Or even if you don't know what you, you're going to do, there's always like plans out there. So don't really think too much. Um, and yeah, take it easy. Like don't stress yourself out too much because there's no point. Um, and yeah, like there's so many different like ways to get into to get a job like there's apprenticeships ways there's like internship ways or you can just like go university so everyone has been in your like shoes if you can say that <laughs> but um everyone's been there so everyone's getting through it and you'll get through it as well so just don't stress out i think i would have told myself that <laughs> great yeah i would just add to to add to that I would just say yeah just to believe in yourself follow your passions um don't stress too much about what specific role you need you want to get into I didn't know what I wanted to do even when I was studying at university I wasn't sure so just keep an open mind and to just follow with what you really enjoy doing and then everything else will hopefully work itself out yeah and to add to that don't be afraid to fail I failed spectacularly spectacularly so many times and every time when you do that you learn more and you move on and Accenture gives you an Accenture or anything that you do will give you the space to grow then yeah so that's it I think yeah. there's a question about uh, what the future of technology is uh, and I'm going to uh, can I take the question Zarina yeah of course <laughs> okay all right uh, yeah uh, and um, this is part of Tech Vision from Accenture. It's called Robots in the Wild. So uh, when you say that, it sounds very cool, right? This is specifically around the drone technology that we are seeing. So that's like listening to you, watching you from space. And these things can actually fly anywhere. And soon there could be like lampposts, like charging docks where they can sit charge themselves and fly to different locations. So your Amazon parcels could be delivered by one of these drones just swooping down to your houses. And I believe that's like the future of technology, your artificial intelligence and anything that feeds into traveling for these uh, robots like um, blockchain technology, which can now tell people how to travel to destination A to destination B with no drivers in the actual vehicle. So um, virtual reality, where doctors doesn't necessarily have to expo expose themselves to harmful UV uh, rays when they're studying about radioactive materials, etc. So those are the future things that we should be looking forward to. Yeah, I think a lot of things will be automated as well. So a lot of processes yeah. will be automated. So that's something right. If you usually do yourself you could have it done for you or scheduled for you as well yeah okay some really great questions guys so i just want to reiterate the key takeaways that you don't need a technical stem degree to work in tech as you can see from our careers roles in tech are very very rare very rare <laughs> varied so there's something for everyone um, you can go into more career uh, creative side if you're more into that into a more business side finance and that's all within the technology umbrella at Accenture so as long as you have a really strong passion for technology and you have a willingness to learn new things always being open to learning new things because technology is a constantly evolving field there's always something new coming out every week every month so as long as you have a willingness to learn then I think Accenture could be the place for you and that's well said Thank you guys for listening and learning. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Thank you so much. That was so interesting.
Um, I am really excited and ready for driverless cars because um, I don't have a driver's <laughs> license and I'm really scared to learn. So I'm just waiting for driverless cars to come along and solve that problem for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, or we can move back to carriages driven by horses. That's a choice too. <laughs> also a great idea. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you all so much, um, all the team from Accenture for being here. That was so interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I've got a very super quick feedback poll for you guys. So that's going to flash up on your screen now if you want to fill that out for all the girls that have attended um, and we will also be sending you an email afterwards so we're going to send you a video of the presentation um, and uh, a couple of other things as well so look out for an email from us afterwards um, and yeah thank you all so much for being here um, and huge thanks to Accenture I really want to work there now maybe you'll see me later. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you <laughs> thank you so much Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Thank rest of the day.